Hey everybody, welcome. My name is Caleb, and this course will be about Oracle Database. So, if you don't know anything about Oracle Database, that's perfectly cool because we're going to explain it. This is a beginner style course. We're going to take it kind of slow, but we're also going to go in a lot of depth. If any of you have ever seen any of my other videos, you kind of know my style of teaching. So, I'm going to keep it the same. Now, just to kind of start off, let me just kind of explain. Oracle Database is a database, right? There's all kinds of different databases. You might have heard of MySQL, SQL Server, MongoDB. There's all kinds of different databases. The one we are going to be using, Oracle Database. Now, Oracle Database is known as an enterprise database. Whereas MySQL is something, that's another database that's uh, open source. It's not an enterprise. They might have enterprise versions or something. But anyways, there are free versions, so that's probably what I'm going to be using. So feel free to join right in with that because I know a lot of you uh, don't want to pay for the software when you're just learning it or something like that. Yeah, so let's get started. If I already lost you on what I was talking about with databases, don't worry. Here's where it starts fresh, okay? So what is a database? A database is designed it's basically a program that's designed to store a bunch of information or data. So a database stores data. So data goes inside of the database, if that makes any sense. Well, what's data? Well, think of data very broadly. It's nothing too specific. It can be anything that you need to store for later use. For example, usually databases are used for businesses. So a business will need to store data so they can analyze that data and make business decisions, right? So if they're like making, like it's a restaurant, right? And they're making two kinds of hamburgers. We got hamburger with extra tomatoes and then a hamburger with no tomatoes. <laughs> I don't know, stupid example. But basically, they want to know which one sells better so they can advertise it on television or whatever they're advertising on. Well, then they can analyze that data and make a decision based upon that data. It's kind of just kind of like uh, like analytics or statistics. If basically, if basically like 80% of the people that come into the store buy the tomato hamburger, why would they advertise the one without the tomatoes when it's only a small fraction of their sales and no one values them? So they would choose the hamburger with the tomatoes, right? So that's an example we could store. The data in that situation would be the sales. And, and we would store information about those sales, such as when, when the sales occurred, how many, um, who bought it, what the price was, and so forth. And then we can put all that data together and get uh, a final summation of what the sales are like and you can make business decisions off of that data. Now that's just one use for a database. There's others. A very common use is for websites. They store all of your information in a database. Any kind of program that program or website that you put information in and it saves it and then you X out of it and then open it up at a later date, that is stored in something. 90% of the time, it's a database. You can store information in other things, such as a, a spreadsheet. There's comma-separated values. Just notepads. You can use a notepad. I made an application once where I had to take a URL, and I didn't want to create a whole database for it. So all I did was just make a little um, URL.txt or whatever, and then I just copied the first line of that which had the URL in there. So if I needed to change the URL, I could just open that text file and change it. So that's an example of how I use Notepad. Comma separated value, that's pretty self-explanatory by the name. And a spreadsheet, well spreadsheets are kind of like a very simplified version of databases. And you'll see why pretty soon. But I'm sure a lot of you have worked with spreadsheets. Spreadsheets have, you know, like a table-like look with columns and rows. These are columns and this is a row. 
Well, a database is visually represented the same way. In a database, this would be known as a table. We got the, the columns this way and the rows this way. That's going a little, I just want to give you some, a taste of like what we'll be working with. But we're going to try and think of it a little more conceptually first, just so you guys can get a better idea of how we store data, what kind of data we want to store. So that way you don't get confused on if we should store it this way or that way or what. So let's try to do that now. So if you guys are wondering why you would want to use a database when you can use something like a spreadsheet or a, just a notepad or a comma separ separated value or anything like that, why would you want to use a database? Well, there are some really good reasons, but I also want you guys to understand there's not always a reason to use a database. For example, what I talked about earlier, how I made an application and I needed to pull a URL, that's the only thing I needed. So I can just make a text file 50 times easier in my opinion. So there's not always a really good reason to use a database, but oftentimes there are. If you have to analyze data, store a lot of information, and so forth, you might want to look into a database. By now. Right, so I'm just going to go over a couple of examples how a database is better than, for example, a spreadsheet. It's worse though because it's more complex, it's harder to learn, and you can, you can um, mess things up if you don't know what you're doing. Whereas a spreadsheet, it's kind of like, oh, grandma can do it, maybe. I don't know. So, what are the benefits of a database? Well, if you think of a spreadsheet, you have all or nothing. So, we got a spreadsheet here, right? We got our columns and our rows, and we can put information in that. Right, well, what if I want this row, this column right here, I mean, which has people's social security number. I want that to be completely private. I don't want no one to see it. And then I'm going to share it out to all my employees. Well, that's not really going to work out too well because the whole spreadsheet is a whole, right? Another issue, there, there's not good support for multiple people working on the spreadsheet at once. Now there are some solutions that help with that, such as Google, Google Drive, uh, where you can use spreadsheets with multiple people. But in general, databases can support multiple users with multiple different rules. So this person can do, can do this with these, this information, but this person, he's not allowed to do that. That's off limits to him. So there's multiple different things you can do with the database, different rule sets. So you can set kind of like standards. All right. So like basic user, administrator, super administrator, you know what I mean? Whereas a spreadsheet, it's, you're a little bit less flexible with that. Another good thing is like, uh, if you think of spreadsheets, you usually store all the information in one spreadsheet. So let's say we got people's information about themselves. So you got their name, their address and their phone. But what if you only want the phone number and their name so you can go through and call them? Well, in a database, that's really easy. You can just select certain pieces of information. Whereas on a spreadsheet, we might have name, address, and phone. And if we wanted to take this address and hide it, that's not super easy. But with the database, that's a piece of cake. With the database, there's higher security. Uh, the data is protected better than a spreadsheet and it's, it's less likely to be uh, hacked into or destroyed maliciously, so there's higher security. Also on top of that, there's usually better recovery options if something was to go wrong, such as the power went out or your computer exploded. That's all I'm going to explain for this video. Next video we'll be discussing basic design methods for databases. And then a few later, a few videos down the road, we're going to be installing Oracle Database and showing you around a little bit on that. Then we'll teach up here, program on there. It's going to be sweet. So be sure to subscribe. Also support me on Patreon. Patreon, place where you can support me month to month. I just got a patron, pa patron for 10 bucks a month, which is awesome. So Chad Leon, be sure to send me your shirt size because... You never did, so you want a shirt, but I have no idea what size you wear. But thank you. <laughs> Alright, peace.
Yeah. Were you recording? I was. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm going to finish this. As soon as I turn it on, I thought, oh, crap. Give me a minute.